is the Lord. Once again, we are welcome to our covenant with you. It is a covenant with you because we have covenanted ourselves that until Jesus Christ comes, every Friday there will be vigil here. That's why it is a covenant vigil. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, maybe there are some pastors here who are listening to me now. It is not easy to start every Friday vigil in any ministry. Every week vigil. As soon as you start it, the very influential members, they will come to you and give you ideas. You see, pastor, if this thing can be done, like once in a month, it will become more effective. You see, people will come out, become more effective. So why don't we do it once? Can't you see, like, redeem is once? You see, everybody the place, get crowded, everybody comes. Can't you see, like, other places, most churches once, so that members can prepare. You know, they are the ones sponsoring the ministry. They are the influential ones. So, you know, and then you say, okay, okay, okay. I think you have taken sense. Hey, praise the Lord. They have come to me in this church oh, when we started. They came to me. Oh. Amen. Unfortunately, I'm a very stubborn man to what I believe. I say, oh, God, brother, it's not compulsory. It's not compulsory. We, we will continue every Friday, but we shall not make it compulsory. If you have chance, you come. If you don't have chance, don't come. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you don't have chance, it's not compulsory. Amen. Hallelujah. Lazy people. You make a lazy man your advisor. What type of advice will he give you? Lazy people advice. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And they came, they say, oh, this church will have been a very big church. But because you people don't close in time. Oh, pastor, if you can close in time, you will see how this place will be crowded. Amen. I should close in time. Then I say, help me arrange the service for me. So, from what time? We are starting 9 o'clock. Okay. From nine to what? Give me the first thing we have to do, how long it should last. Then the next thing we should do, how long it should last. Tell me now. They stand and look at me. I don't know how you will arrange it, but just the time. Or you can have first service and second service and third service. Amen. Praise the Lord. Instead of reducing the time, I increase the time. People have become so lukewarm. Why are you not comfortable in God's presence? Why do you want to come in and jump out? You can stay in your nightclub from morning to night. For beer parlor, you will stay for hours. You don't look at your time. Now when you enter church, you go stand and look time. You can stand and watch football. 90 minutes, finish. Another one they play, you can watch again. For DSTV or whatever TV you watch. But when it comes to church, rush and amok we go. You can watch movies in your house. Part one, part two, part three. All. You don't look at time. But when you come to church, then you go look at time. This one is wasting time. This one is wasting time. With the waste time, oh. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Who told you that that every church, or particularly this church, is for everybody? This church is not for everybody. Do you understand? This church is not for everybody. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody called me one day, a friend of mine called me one day. 
I kept calling, kept calling. My peer will answer the call, say his piece is still in the church. His piece is still in the church. And then by 8 p.m., 8, 9 p.m., I closed from church. On a Sunday, I was going home. And he called me, say, what happened? I called, they said, you see the church. Today, on Sunday now, which town are they close? Then he said, now only you kill Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I said, no, be only me kill Jesus. You are correct. Hallelujah. And I told him, Sunday is my working day. I'm a pastor. So Sunday is my working day. And I close after I have seen the last person I'm supposed to see that day. Praise the Lord. But whatever it is, church, hallelujah, you are not comfortable in the presence of God. It's because you don't have the Holy Ghost. Come and get the Holy Ghost here in June this year. You need the Holy Ghost. The spirit in you does not feel comfortable in God's presence. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, now you pastor they talk to. <laughs> now you. Now you. Answer I'm be sincere. Answer I'm. Answer I'm. Amen. I, I came because I, uh, uh, today, hallelujah, I, I, have, I have some things to remind us of. And this is fueled by an email that I received yesterday. Uh, through our website and it's been very very encouraging to us we have a lot of response a lot of response all over the world all over the world all over <laughs> hallelujah I'm telling you and every day I have reason to take the ministry more seriously every day knowing that a lot of people are resting their faith on what we are saying here and if we mislead them we will pay for it we and we are happy to hear that a lot of people a lot are getting themselves revived they are not here just watching us through our live broadcast through our streaming on the net, I'm telling you, and it's very interesting. And God will bless all of you that are sponsoring this evangelism. I'm telling you, you are not wasting your sponsorship. If you are here, clap for yourself. For your... Wait, wait. I say those who are sponsoring evangelism. Who are they? Stand up if you are among them. Stand up. Stand up if you are among those sponsoring evangelism in this ministry. Uh -huh. clap your hands only, only those standing only those, you are sitting down now. only those standing God bless you, God bless you be seated, you have not wasted your sponsorship that is the truth from all over the world and people are coming for our June camp from outside the country they have indicated some of them are coming outside Lagos some people are coming we are busy thinking now of how we will create a protocol department to take care of the foreigners that will be coming in here already. They will be tripping in here one by one. Hallelujah. It has started. That is how it starts. Amen. And this is a brother, Pastor Elvis is his name, from Kingdom Life Charismatic Ministries in Thailand. He sent this email. I don't know him, but he watches us. Even now, he may be on, on his, uh, uh, what do you call it, computer set now looking and watching us like so many other people do from particularly Europe, America, and these Asian countries, they are watching us now. And please, can we just wave our hand and tell them we are together? We are together. Just say we are together. 
We, we are together. We are together. We welcome all of you watching us from all over the world. This is our own way of saying shalom. Can you shout shalom to the whole world? Say it to the whole world. Shalom. Thank you. God bless you. They are watching us. Now this is what he said. He said, glory be to God that a man like you have been predestinated just to continue where William Marion Braham stopped. How, hallelujah, this is what he said. He said, how will we have had this message if God in his infinite mercy have not kept you till our generation? You have said so many things in your sermons that are too hard to accept. That can only and only be accepted if that person is among the elect. I have so many questions, but I will ask them one after the other until I am well exhorted. Many of us preachers have preached what we don't understand just because one daddy and mommy says so and we believe it's right without even cross-checking. Well, I thank God who has counted me worthy to be part of the 11th hour laborers. And he continued, again, I want to draw your attention from my research that many denominations know the primary truth about water baptism. It's very clear and obvious that they know, but they have refused to follow the way it should be because that would destroy some of their foundation. If they believe that baptism should be in the name and that if they believe that baptism should be in the name of Jesus, that will first of all destroy the doctrine of Trinity. I stand aside in my imagination trying to exclude myself from the picture so I can see clearly. In my mind, I climbed a tall building looking down on the earth to see so clearly the activities of men here on earth. I see two groups of people living here on earth. If only men of God will study carefully and humbly ask God, he will also reveal the mystery of iniquity to them. If all ministers could understand this mystery, what a good and pleasant world our Christian lives will be. I will stop here, Daddy, because the foundation of the Lord standard, sure, God knows those that are his. Hallelujah. And he asked a question. He said, Daddy, I have heard you explain the rapture. I made so many comments that I will want you to explain further. I believe that on that day, when the elect will be raptured, like you always say, that people think that Molue will jump Molue, bus will jump bus, car will jump car, and so on. That is what I have believed. Please explain to me more about the way the rapture will be. Thanks, Pastor Elvis. Praise God. That means he listens to our messages. Hallelujah. And I replied him earlier in the day that if he can join us today, I will comment on it today. And put it on tape, but if he's not able to join us, he can be sure that it will be uploaded and he can watch it tomorrow in our video section of our website. Hallelujah. And so, we will look at today the rapture of the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and, and the average denominational, blind denominational, untutored, unrevelated denominational believer, Christian, is waiting for the day that they will hear para, ba, 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 in the sky. Then there will be confusion galore. Molues will jam Molue. Aeroplane will jam aeroplane. And then there will be confusion. Okada will be jamming Okada. 
Everybody confusion galore. When it happen? A rapture. It's not like that, though. Matthew 24. Let's, let the Bible speak. And listen carefully for those who are hearing us for the first time. It's a call sermon for the bride. And we have preached this several times. Because it is the basis of our gathering. That is why we are not a denomination. It is this understanding. Now somebody may be hearing it for the first time now. Hallelujah. That positions you and you can say you are a bride member. You are the bride of Jesus Christ. No bride assembly church Lagos. Who, there are people that are members of bride assembly Lagos but they are not members of the bride of Jesus Christ. I hope you know that. Uh, I'm talking to revelated people. I'm talking about the bride of Jesus Christ. And I'm talking to them. They are everywhere worldwide. Hallelujah. God is leading them to listen to what they should hear. And in Matthew 24, praise God. It's a Bible study. Bible study. If I don't finish today, I finish next week. God willing. Verse 3. If you are there. And as he sat, that is Jesus Christ, sat upon the Mount of Olives, Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of his coming and of the end of the world? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sorry. I repeat. Hear the questions the disciples were asking him. Because in verse 1 and verse 2, he was speaking about the destruction that will come on Jerusalem and how the temple will be no more. He had been telling them about things concerning the end. And they asked him, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? There are three questions there. What sh when, uh, uh, when shall these things be? Which things? The destruction of the temple. The destruction of Jerusalem. When will it be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? Because he told them he will go and come back. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Believe in me, believe in God, believe in me also. Hallelujah. So I go up to prepare a place for you. He says so. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In John chapter 14, he says so. He had been telling them that he will come back. And he will collect them. And he said, what shall be the sign of thy coming? Amen. Hallelujah. Because before you, co you come, there must be a sign. Amen. Anytime a God wants to come, anytime God wants to come anywhere, to meet you as an individual, to come and meet you as a group, before he comes, there will be a sign. Even the president, the governor of Lagos State, if he's going to come here, we will sit down here if you don't know that he will come. Before he finally arrives, there will be a sign that governor is coming or the president is coming. And particularly in this part of the world, before the president of Nigeria will come anywhere, 30 minutes for his arrival, every road will close. It is a sign that the president is coming. One time he told Elijah to wait. He will meet him somewhere. Hallelujah. God said, I will meet with you there. He was waiting. Small time. What was it that happened? There was earthquake that shook everywhere. Amen. Hallelujah. Small time again. 
No, no, no. Then he peeped. I mean, he thought that God don't come. So he was waiting to see God. He looked at the earthquake. There was no God there. Some more time again, a wind blew. Blew everywhere. Hey, he don't come, he don't come, he don't come. Elijah looked where, where? God was not in the wind. God was not in the earthquake. Some more time, fire. Fire. Elijah looked very well. God was not in the fire. What was the, the, the wind? What was the earthquake? What was the, the, the fire? It was a sign of the coming of God. Hallelujah. God is not in the fire. Listen, God is not in fire. God is not in the earthquake. It is a sign. And they ask him, what shall be the sign of thy coming? <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the third question is, what is the sign of the end of the world? The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the end of the world, they are two different occurrences. Because we are waiting now for the coming of the Lord. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that was the question they asked. And this was the answer. Verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them. This is his answer. Take heed that no man deceive you. Can you see now? If you are sitting down, you are waiting for Papa, 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 Papa. You are being deceived. You are deceived because you will not come like that. All the teachings that made you to believe that, that is why Jesus Christ knew it will happen. And be not deceived. Do not be Deceived, that is number one. Verse five. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ. Many will come. He didn't say that they will say, I am Jesus Christ. So, I am Christ. That is, I am anointed. That is, they will come that I am anointed and shall deceive many. They shall deceive many. Using the anointing, many will be deceived. You see why the bride of Jesus Christ is suspicious of everyone that is anointed? Hallelujah. Anywhere, any anointing that is going on, a true elect of God, a true bride of Jesus Christ, he will sit like Andrew, I mean Philip, 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 sit down under the sacrament tree. They watch. Amen. And when you say you are watching, what are you watching? What are you watching? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Take time. Mom. Hallelujah. Take time. Mom. Now make a woman coordinator now. If they are watching, listen church, if the bride of Jesus Christ is watching, there must be something they are watching for. There is something you are watching for. There is something you are watching for. Church, I don't know how to say it. There is something you are watching for. To confirm to you, hallelujah, that God is here. There's something you are watching for. Blessed be the name of the Lord. After the fire, after the wind, after the earthquake, what was the evidence that God had come? There was a still small 
voice. After the bride of Jesus Christ is watching what everybody is doing with the anointing. Thank God for the anointing. But what is the voice following that anointing? That is what the bride wants to hear. I said, voice that you want to hear. What are you saying? What are you saying? Okay, you do people will fall down. Praise God. After they stood up and they sat down, what are you telling them? That is why we can look at some places and tell you God is not there. Because we try to listen to what they are saying and we saw them speaking like a himas. All they say is, all is well. All is well. All is well. What is the message? All is well. Distress of nation. Economies are crumbling. Everything is going upside down. Life now has no meaning again. Earthquakes everywhere. Tsunamis everywhere. Hunger everywhere. Wars everywhere. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then a preacher who should be telling you something that will make you prepare to go home. He's telling you all is well. It's because he doesn't know how to interpret what is going on. If he knew it, he would say it. And they carry themselves mighty, mighty titles. Apostle doctor. An apostle is one that is sent. The sent one is called apostle. How can you say God sent you to tell them all his way? So I want you to note that. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Be not deceived. And he went to tell them things they should watch out for. Go to verse 14. He says something. In verse 14 he says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. For what? For a witness unto all nations. And are all nations not hearing us now? Are they not hearing us now? Oh. They're hearing the gospel. He said, and then shall the end come. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But he was still asked. That question he was still answering. The whole of Matthew 24. Then he came to verse 23. Are we there? He said then, that is in future, now he was referring to a period of time and this is that period. Then, if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Christ. Or there, he said, believe it not. You see? That means, concerning the second coming of Jesus Christ, let nobody, directly or indirectly, hallelujah, please, Please, make sure you come here on Sunday. Those of you who love the word, I am starting a teaching that I tied to Behold the Antichrist. Uh, listen, and I'm not talking about the, 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 the man of sin. Hallelujah. See, let's leave that man in Rome first. Let's leave that man in Rome first. I'm telling you there are Antichrist already. I'll prove it to you on Sunday. Praise God. If you don't, we are not able to come, get the tape. And listen, it's for your own good. Antichrist, fool everywhere. If they tell you he's in somewhere, amen. Verse what? Believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ. Hallelujah. And false prophets. I shall show great signs and wonders. Great signs and wonders. Great signs and wonders. You see why we say 
God's elect are not carried about, carried away because you have any form of anointing. He says so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect, but it is not possible. That's why we are called the elect. It is not possible to deceive the elect. It is possible to persecute the elect, but it is not possible to deceive the elect. Okay, verse 25. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. Go not forth. Behold, he is in a secret chamber somewhere. Believe it not. Then, this is what he said, verse 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east. You see it now? This is it now. Listen, you know, my own Bible, I underlined this in 1990. That is where I knew this scripture. It was in 1990. That time, I stood there inside prison yard. The things I preached are things I knew when I was under detention. God kept me in detention and fed me where, where before he brought me out. He made sure I didn't go near any denomination. After I gave my life to Christ, he revealed the message to me. That's why every day I continued to thank him and thank him and thank him. He did not allow me to go the way of error. I will have been answering Reverend Dr. Moses Alu by now. Oh yes, because even in this ministry, they have offered me several times honorary doctorate degree that I should come and collect it. Schools of theology offered me, I have their letters. They are doing a great thing. Some even say I should come and receive an award. From a great contribution. Amen. I will laugh. I said, see these ones. See, see, see them. You are giving me honor, doctorate degree. Do you believe what I'm preaching? Do, do you believe what I'm preaching? So what are you giving me honor for? If not, if not, ah, ah, in fact, this church is 14 years old now. I will have been Bishop Moses alone. And my wife will have been Reverend Mrs. Clara Alu. And we will have been having our special seat with a special carpet before. Oh, sit down. Nobody else sits on that seat. Oh, if it had not been for Jesus, oh, where would I be? I'm so glad that the Lord brought me out. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, even as I'm preaching, as some people sitting there here, they're going to frown, frown. I'm not going to talk some things now because there's still transport outside. If we reach like 1 a.m., I go open up. So you, 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 you can't be angry and go. Can't be angry and go. Truth is bitter. <laughs> but it's that bitter aspect that heals. That's the truth. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, I'm reading it again. Oh. Which verse? This is how Jesus Christ will come. Listen, this is how he will come. This verse covers everything. It's a foundational revelation of the coming of Jesus Christ. That verse 27, 28. Listen, church. He is not coming by any confusion anywhere. This is how Jesus Christ will come. He himself said it by himself. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered 
together. How many eagles are here? That is how Jesus Christ himself made that statement and many people are reading that verse and they know nothing about what he meant. But we, we know what is written there. The bride we know. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He is using the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun to describe the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The light there is the word of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Is the word of God that moves from the east down to the west. Now, in this little exhortation, if our IT people will cooperate with us, I don't know if you can show and you look at it, some little uh, graphic displays, I mean, that we will show on the screen, like uh, 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 to show something here. Now, if we go to uh, Exodus chapter 37, there is something that I want us to read there. Exodus chapter 37. Hallelujah. Let me read something here. Remember that Moses was before God's presence and he was asked to come and build a tabernacle for the Lord. And the pattern that was given to him, hallelujah, was given to him after the heavenly pattern. Apostle Paul explained it to us in the book of Hebrew. But this, and everything that he was asked to do was representing something in heaven. And it was a shadow of something that was to come. The law is a shadow Colossians chapter 2, verse 17, 16 and 17 says so. Whether it is Sabbath, whether it is a new moon, whatever is the law that was given, he said it is a shadow of things to come. Let no one judge you by it because grace is the fulfillment of the law. Christ came to fulfill the law through grace. And so, if you want to understand salvation, then you have to go to the Old Testament and see some shadows there. It will help you understand what the New Testament is all about. And so, concerning the tabernacle, verse 17, 37, let me read it from verse 17. Listen carefully. And he made the candlestick of pure gold. Of beat, uh, beating work made he the candlestick. His shaft and his branch, his balls, his knobs and his flowers were of the same. Listen carefully. Follow it carefully. Don't just read for reading's sake. I'm bringing out something from here. And six branches, six branches going out of the sides thereof. Hallelujah. Now, if you don't mind, Shile, if you show us the first uh, photograph or the chart. Chart number one. Now, that is what I am reading. What you see there. That candle stand there if you look at the screen that is what he's describing here he says he says, he says you should make the the candlestick the candlestick there that is what you see they are standing there and he said verse 18 says and six branches going out of the sides thereof can you see them three to the right three to the left correct three branches of the candlestick out of the one side thereof and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side thereof. Three bowls made after the fashion of Almos in one branch, a knob and a flower and three bowls made like almonds in another branch, a knob and a flower. So throughout the six branches going out of the candlestick and the candlestick we are four bowls made like almond, his knobs and his flowers. And a knob under two branches of the same. You see them resting on the knob. And a knob 
under two branches of the same, and the knob under two branches of the same, according to the six branches going out of it. Their knobs and their branches were of the same. All of it were, was one beating work of pure gold. And this is why I'm going verse 27. And he made his seven lambs, because the center one is the seventh one. Three to the right, three to the left. The center one is also a candle stand. Stand there, and his snuffers and his uh, snuff dishes of pure gold, of a talent of pure gold, made he it, and all the vessels thereof. And if you watch what you are watching carefully, seven candle sticks, hallelujah, in the temple at the altar of the tabernacle, and each of them there was, there was oil in it. The light, the process of lightning, these seven sticks, they don't light them at the same time. You light from one. Because of the oil that is in it, when you light from one, the next one collects it. The next one collects it. I think even in kerosene stove, they do like that. I think it was of something like that. Once one of the something catches fire, the rest will be collecting it. That is how it is. Because, and each one of those candlesticks, that is what you see in Revelation chapter 1. Can we open it? Listen carefully so that you will understand where we are going. No more following our eyes of understanding. He has opened it up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and guard about the paps with a golden his hand and his ears we are white like wool as white as snow and his eyes were as a flame of fire and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters and he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp to a sword and his countenance was as the sun shined in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Now verse 20. The mystery. Somebody shout mystery. Say it again. Mystery. A mystery is a hidden truth. Hallelujah. That can never be known until he who hid it reveals it to you. Amen. And salvation is a mystery. And that's why blessed be the name of the Lord. Apostle Paul says that Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. And people, how that, Apostle Paul says, how that by wisdom, hallelujah, men could not understand God. Because he came, hallelujah, in what they were with time to be foolish. But it is in that foolishness that he displayed his wisdom. And he displays his power. Because he hid the process of through salvation, he hid it in a mystery. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so we get excited when he, God, we have the privilege of him granting us understanding of some of these mysteries. And that's why when we speak, we speak the way we speak confidently. Hallelujah, because we know on which ground we stand. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. 
That is the rock now. It's the rock of revelation. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Verse 20, the mystery of the seven stars that we see. Hallelujah. In verse 20 and in verse 12, the candle stands. He said, the mystery of the seven stars which thou sowest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. This is the mystery. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks with thou sowest are the seven churches. That is, God was telling Moses about the seven church ages. That was a shadow. Hallelujah. That's why you see it displayed there. Hallelujah. You see it there on the screen. It says, as the lightning, lightning from the east to the west, it says, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. The sun, the gospel light, is talking about the gospel light. He uses nature. Does not even nature teach you? Nature teaches salvation. Nature teaches redemption. Nature is preaching gospel. I have preached that gospel message before. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Does not even nature teach you? Hallelujah. And so, and so this is it now. The sun rises from the east and travels and everybody sees and everybody knows when it is evening time. The sun is going down. Where does the sun end at last? We are in the, in the west. It starts from the east and ends in the west. And after it ends in the west, where does it appear again the next day? In the east again. Telling you how the gospel that was rejected by the Jews, it started with them. The gospel started with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you screen that again, you will see what I'm talking about. Jesus Christ started from the east. The gospel started from the east. Israel is in the east. They call it the Middle East. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Started from the Middle, middle East. Middle East. Let's go to chart number two. Let me explain something there for them. In, in, the, in the second chart that you see on the screen now, this is it. The, you see where Israel, you see where the picture of Jesus Christ is, that he started from Israel. Hallelujah. And the gospel was rejected and it went to the Gentiles. And that is where you began to see from the first church age. Hallelujah. After the day of Pentecost, the Acts of Apostles, what gave us this Bible? Paul, from where, where was uh, Apostle Paul? From Greece. If you know the map of the world, this little graphic here, I'll show you what it is all about. From Greece, you have Apostle Paul, the first church age messenger. That was the light. Hallelujah. I remember that Jesus Christ was in the midst of the candlesticks. Why? Because he was the one in charge. He was watching to make sure the oil was complete in everyone. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And they remember that the candlestick was all made of gold. Gold speaks of deity. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is everything there was divine divinely arranged and divinely supervised. We are built upon the foundations of the apostles. Ephesians 2.20 says so. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The revelation, the gospel that we preach is the revelation of Jesus Christ. That is the gospel we preach. Okay. Hallelujah, because everything is revolved around Christ and Christ. Now, if you watch the screen again, you will see that 
Israel from, from Apostle Paul in Greece, the first church age, it moved to the second church age. I'm talking Bible history now. Hallelujah. Iranius is agreed worldwide that he was the next church age messenger, the second church age messenger. And then the third, and then, and then moving again, see the way it was moving in Europe there, it was moving to France, where you, we got Martin in the next church age, the third church age, the fourth church age was now moving down towards uh, UK, we have in Ireland and Scotland, where we have Columba. And then it moved again. Hallelujah. Moving down, down like that, we have Luther. And then it moved again to Wesley. And it moved again to the West. Hallelujah. And that is where it produced the man William Marion Braham. As the light lightened from the East. Hallelujah. Shining from the east to the west. From the east. Hallelujah. From the Jews to the Gentiles. And it ended in the west. And that is why we are confidently telling you that we are in the evening time. And the Bible has shows us in Zechariah chapter 14 verse 7 that at evening time there shall be light. There is the evening light. The evening light there is the evening gospel. And that is the end time message. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The candlesticks, they are the churches. The light there, they are the star messengers who we are bearing the light. Shining the light for the bride of every age to follow. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. When Jesus Christ said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. It means the gates of hell will prevail. And I told you that the gates of hell, they are not witches and wizards. The gates of hell, they are not Boko Haram. Listen carefully. The gates of hell, they are the four horse riders. In Revelation chapter uh, chapter 6. Those four horse riders, they were the Antichrist spirit. When Satan rises like, the enemy rises like a flood. What did God say he will do? The spirit of God will lift up a standard against that nonsense. And people don't understand what the Bible is saying. Yes, the gates of hell shall not prevail. He didn't say the gates of hell shall not attack. But it will not prevail. Why? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Nobody can work against God's program. Nobody can work against God's program. Those four horse riders, the colors, four different colors, appearing in four different colors, they are the same rider, but the same horse, but changing appearances. It started with a white, white uh, horse. The color was white. I'm telling you, Revelation chapter 6 says so. Amen. It changed to black, no, to, to red. After red, it changed to black. And after black, it changed to what? Pale. Pale horse rider. And each of that was the move of the Antichrist spirit against the church. But God will always raise a standard. A standard. And that standard is in Revelation chapter 4. The four beasts before the throne of God. The first one is what? The lion. The second one is what? The ox. The third one is what? The face of a man. And the fourth one is what? The flying eagle. That is it there. The flying eagle. People don't know why we have that symbol there. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that flying eagle was reserved to counter the pale horse rider. Pale horse rider. Pale is the color of deceit. Neither white nor red. Just it be like say, it be like say. It's a color of deceit. This is the age of false Christs. False prophets. False anointed ones. And God released an anointing that is typed of an eagle. All the characteristic of an eagle is the characteristic of the spirit that he poured on his bride in this age. And it is a spirit that makes you to see far and see error. And you given enough wings to fly away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That is God's standard. And then they are depicted there. Those seven lights there. Seven star messengers. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And when we say this here. People look at us as if we are some fanatics. When God raises a standard and you refuse to follow that light to pull you out of darkness, you will remain in darkness and perish. That's the truth. Satan, right from when the church of Jesus Christ started, he began to attack it. That is the history depicted by those four horses. I'm caught, I'm summarizing it because it is, it is there, it's there in the books. It's there. The history is there. Don't be a Christian without knowing what has been going on in Christianity. Some of you are saying I'm a Nigerian. You don't know how we became Nigeria. It's wrong. You're a Nigerian. How come you and I together, uh, Bayesa man and Sokoto man, we are together. One country. How did it come about? You should know what is happening. Praise the Lord. You should know how we became one nation, one people, one, and now we are saying we are one. We are one, we are one. You don't know how we are one. Because you don't bother to know history. You must know, you must study to know what has been going on in the church of Jesus Christ. Study and know from this Bible. Read this Bible. You must ask questions. In this Bible, for instance, there is no woman pastor. Would you ask, how come now we have women pastors? Would you ask? There is history about it. In the Bible, there was nothing like, 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 like God the Son. Is, is there anything God the Son in the Bible? There is nowhere written anywhere in the Bible, God the Son. There is nowhere written in the Bible, God the Holy Ghost. Nothing like that. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Son of God is different from God the Son. Hallelujah. Would you ask? Would you ask? Where did we begin to have men of God? Bearing reverend, reverend doctor. Would you ask? When did we have titles like Pope and General of Asia and all this? Would you ask? Haba, why will you just sit down and enter something and you don't bother to know what it is? In the first church age, they spoke lies. Ananias and Sephiras, what happened to them? They died. Would you ask question? Your boyfriend went sleep with you before. See how they preach in the prophesy. And nothing they happen. And anointing they flow. Would you ask, ah, how come? This man sleep with me yesterday. Would you ask? There is a history to it. Our eyes of understanding, he has opened up at last. And to victory is ours, who we are chained down in the past. To jubilee is and we have responded to our God, whose original life, original Christianity. The original sea, the original world. It's what I believe. It's what I believe. Oh, the Son of Man. The Son of Man. It's revealed the seven seas will be unveiled. The original. The 
original sin. Listen, church. Hallelujah. Listen. Why did I show you those seven candlesticks? It's for you to know that God has a program that he foreshadowed even in the building of the tabernacle. The church of Jesus Christ is known as the temple of God. That's the church of Jesus Christ. And there is a temple that Solomon built. And the building of that temple was speaking about the building of the spiritual temple of God. And how many years did it take Solomon to build that temple? Seven years. Speaking of seven church ages. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And let me tell you another thing again. Let me tell you another thing again. That temple was built, hallelujah, with materials that were prepared by Solomon. Eh? Who prepared the materials? By his father. Why will you say you don't believe in predestination? Why will you say that you don't believe that your name has been written somewhere? In a book of life from the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When it was time for the building, Solomon did not set up architectural school to produce architects. Solomon did not prepare or establish a factory for making building materials. No. The Bible says every stone was prepared in advance. When it is time, every stone had its place in the, in the temple. You just carry it, it will enter. Pogo. Another way it will enter. Pogo. They said there was no noise of chisel or hammer throughout the building. And that is why it took seven years because every stone has to be located. It has to be located. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That is why I say, Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, church. The body of Christ, Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul, that man, that man. Hey! When I get to heaven, the first person I will look for will be William Abraham. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yes, so because that's my messenger. That's that's the one that's that, that's the one that produced me. That's the star messenger for my age. The next person I will look for will be Paul. How we look at Paul. Now you try. You try, you try, Joe. You try. You try. That man try. He was revelated. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He understood the body of Jesus Christ. The spiritual body. Amen. And he taught us when you see any two ministers quarreling and they all claim to be members of the body of Christ, it is either of two reasons. It is either because somebody is occupying the wrong position or he is not part of that building material. And that's why in bride assembly here, we have no reason. There should be no jealousy. Why should I be jealousy? I am playing my part. Another person will play his part. That's the truth. Why should I be jealous? Why? Why should I be jealous? Why, why should I be jealous? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Another type in the Old Testament was King Ahasuerus. Amen. Watch it. King Ahasuerus has a wife by the queen by the name of who? Vashti. In the book of Esther. Hallelujah. And what happened? Amen. The emphasis there, I'm not going into the details of that story, but that he had a group of people that were in charge of preparing the queen for the king. What did they call them? Chambales. How many were there? Seven. Speaking of the Chamberlains, the star messengers that will be preparing the bride for King Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The evening light is here. Why? Because we are in the days. Revelation chapter 10 verse 7. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel. When he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. As he has declared to his servant the prophets. This is it. This is the days of the voice of the seventh angel. Which voice? Go to Matthew chapter 25. Are we there? Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 25. I hope Elvis is listening from Thailand. I hope no longer you are listening from Ireland. And I hope Esther, you are watching from Germany. And I hope the rest of you, Godwin, I hope you are listening from Austria. Oh yes, we are together. I say shalom to all of you. Chapter 25. Then, that is at the end time. Anytime you see then, 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 is pointing to a particular period. Verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten batches which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise. And five were foolish. That is, some were wise, some were foolish. They that were foolish, see it all, took their lambs and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. While the bridegroom tarried, both the foolish and the wise, all of them slumbered and slept. Amen. Hallelujah. He's speaking about the condition that the church found herself. Hallelujah. Because the Lord tarried to come back. It was a sleeping condition. I'm not going into that details. Because I think we have preached the message without telling why they were foolish. Amen. Okay. But I just want to bring out a point from here. In that condition, that was the condition of the whole church world. The whole church world. Now, one group had oil. Hallelujah. The other group, amen, did not have oil. Am I correct? Am I correct? So, what made them foolish is that they took the alarm, but no oil. It is foolishness. Praise the Lord. It is foolishness. Want this man? Want want this your neighbor? Yellow. Yellow. Want this your neighbor? Want him? See, see, see. Take time. Take time. You are cutting me off. You are cutting me off. You are cutting me off. Praise the Lord. What did I say? I'm talking about two groups of people. Who are who? Who are who? You didn't hear. Tell them. Tell them. What, who, the two groups of people. Who are who? Eh? Tell him. Now they tell me. The foolish and the wise. Which one do you belong? <laughs> By your sleep, we know which one you belong. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What made the other group wise was that they had a lamb and they had oil. Why? That lamp can only shine and sustain her brightness if there is enough oil. Why will you take your lamp stand and put light there to burn and don't bother to make sure you have oil to sustain the light? That makes you foolish. And remember, they were all virgins. That means sincere Christians. They don't commit any sin. They live a life of righteousness or holiness. That's why the Bible called them virgins. 
They've not contaminated themselves with the world. Very, their testimony before heaven was that they were virgin in their faith. Uncontaminated. Undefiled. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What is that lamb? The lamb there is the word of God. And that is this Bible. This Bible is a lamb. The word of God is a lamb. Hallelujah. Thy word is a lamb unto my, my feet. Psalm 119 says so. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But this Bible, amen, unless there is a revelation, you have revelation of this Bible, this word of God will be useless to you. So what is the oil? The oil is the spirit of revelation. The spirit of revelation. I didn't say it's anointing. You can be anointed and yet blind to the true revelation of the word. You see? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That means... Before the slumbering time, there were a group of people that were busy, busy studying the word. And how do we know that you are, you were studying the word, you had, that is, I mean, that, that you were ready, you were ready for revelation, that is, they received the Holy Ghost. While the other one did not go to receive the Holy Ghost. The baptism of the Holy Ghost it's so essential. And, and the, the, the receiving of the baptism of the Holy Ghost prepares you for the next move of God. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, when God is moving, you will not know. Hallelujah. Verse 6. Are we there? Verse 5 says, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made. What is the cry? Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. That is the cry. At midnight, Midnight there is the darkest hour of the night. That means when Christianity became totally dead and all manner of infiltrations, all manner of errors, all manner of confusion until the church looks so powerless. Group of people at that time will say the days of miracle they are past. No more this, no more that. Just Religion is at that hour that a ministry sprang up. And that was the same ministry, blessed be the name of the Lord, that triggered off the second coming of Jesus Christ. That's why I say, listen carefully, it is not confusion anywhere. Hallelujah. That is the period. By that time, the light had traveled to the west. The gospel, hallelujah, for the Gentile was being rounded up. God anointed his seventh angel messenger to scream, a voice that screamed, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. It means there is a message telling you, the person you have been waiting for, he is coming. The God that you have been waiting for, the Savior you have been looking for, Jesus Christ that says he's coming, he says, he is the bridegroom. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. He is on the way. Coming. Because it is evening time. He's on the way coming. That means he had a message that will awaken certain element of people to begin to prepare themselves for home going. 
You see? Apostle Paul, that's why I shouted and said, Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul. You see, Apostle Paul did not hear this parable when Jesus Christ was telling his disciples. But that same Jesus went to Apostle Paul to tell, it was not Peter that told Apostle Paul. Eh? First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Hallelujah. Are we there? This is Apostle Paul. Verse 13. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, our brethren that are dead, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also we sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Those who are asleep and those who are dead. Believers of all the ages that are dead. Then verse 16 is my emphasis. This is the order of the coming of Jesus Christ. Step by step. If you observe as I will read, there are three stages of his coming. Hallelujah. Church, listen. Look your neighbor, where where touch and touch and say, listen, pastor want to talk something, pastor want to talk something. Shake her, shake her, shake her. Look in face before you shake her now. But then your eye open when you close. If your eye close, tell her, say it's not time for vision. Open your eye, look, what pastor want to talk something. Hallelujah. Verse 16. This is how the rapture will take place. I repeat. This is how the rapture that we have all been expecting. This is how it will take place. Can I see any wise veggie here? Wait, wait. I said veggie, veggie, veggie. Any wise one here? Let me see. Clean hearted people. No jealousy. Wave it now. No gossip. No fornication. No beer. No paint paint. No trousers, sister. No nonsense on your hair. Nothing, nothing. No beating of your wife. Wait, now let me see them now. No beating of your wife. No drinking beer for beer palo. No cocaine, no 419. Nothing TV, your master's money. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Wave your hand. Let me see the virgins. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, some of you are very honest. There are something when I talk, some people bring down their hand. Those where they tip their master money, they put down their hand like this. Yes, because you know you are not a virgin. You are not a virgin. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrew 13 verse 4 says, marriage is honorable in all and the bed on the fire. He said, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Uh -huh. Don't worry. When we shall be coming to judge you, you will know. We are coming to judge you. Every sinner, we are coming to judge you. Anybody that doesn't go in the rapture, expect us when we shall be coming to judge you. Praise the Lord. We will rule over you for 1,000 years. Yes. 1,000 years. Some of us will be presidents. Some will be governors. Kings. And Jesus will be the king of kings. Praise the Lord. Ah, I want to go to heaven. I must go in the rapture. Uh, to start with, if I, Pastor Moses, if I should find myself in hell, I know what Satan will do to me there. They will holler with face from Satan first. From mommy water. From all these demons where I don't cast out <laughs> They look at me and say, you come. Hey, you see why I'm doing everything to make sure I enter heaven. Because I know what I will face when I jam them. Their own wahala will go past the one God will give me. It's true. All of us that are ministers, now I'm talking for all of us who, Charles, Charles, every time, fire, fire. Hey, they're waiting for you. They're waiting, they're waiting. Make sure you go to heaven. Make sure you go to heaven. Tell you now. Tell you that's the truth.
Are we there? This is how the rapture will take place. Igbo na your eye they go face attack. Your eye now they go face first. They will plug it off. Now you they see. See why you must go to heaven. Okay. Are we there? Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a say it very loud now with a shout. That is the first stage. The second one with the voice of the earth angel. The third one and with a trump with the trump of God then he said and the dead in Christ shall rise first that's the rapture then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord can you see the rapture the rapture is in three phases the first stage is what Jesus Christ called the midnight cry in verse 6 of Matthew 25. Apostle Paul got a deeper picture. Gave us a deeper picture. When he says it will be a shout. It is the same shout that Jesus Christ was calling midnight cry. Apostle Paul called it shout. The cry there is saying behold the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out. The shout there is the same thing he's saying. Shout! That means there will be a message. There will be a message. Hallelujah. There will be a message. The cry there is not just somebody shouting empty shout. Hey! Hey! Saying a shout. Hey! 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 Hey, I see a lot of preachers shouting, 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 shouting. Huh. Huh. Uh, sweating and shouting and sweating and shouting. How all your witches in your village will die by fire, by fire. They will shout. Don't be that kind of shout too. Praise the Lord. Church, it is. What, what I'm telling you now is the bride food. That is why he said, in Matthew 24, he said, for where the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered. Why did he say so? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The carcass there, amen. Carcass there is the kill. The hunters kill. Hallelujah. Meat. Amen. And when Apostle Paul had his own food, the eagles there is God's elect. When he was dishing out his own food to the Jews, and to those Gentile nations, those who believed, they come around the revelation that Apostle Paul had. And when he moved to Iranius, hallelujah, there was another kill again. Hallelujah. The whole elect of that time gathered around the food that Iranius had. And he moved to Columba. And he had his own revelation he was telling them at that time. And they all God's elect gathered around there. The same thing also with Columba and uh, what do you call him? Martin. The same thing also with John Wesley. The same thing also with Martin Luther. When Martin Luther had his own, by the time Martin Luther had his own, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That was during the dark ages when the Roman Catholic Church took over and then the darkness, no more light of the gospel. And Luther came up with his own. God's elect for that age rallied around what Luther had to give them. That was the gathering of God's elect at that time. And John Wesley took over. And in this age of confusion and deceit, God raised William Abraham also with the carcass. For where the carcass is, there the eagles will gather. Hallelujah. God's attributes we are manifested to his bride in this last age. We have got the revelation by the last prophet's message. 
And we know who we are and what we are raised up for. Praise the Lord for the original life, the original life, the original sin, the original world is what I believe. The original, yes, sir. The original sea. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It is the minister of William Braham, the seventh church age messenger, that fulfills Revelation 10 7 I quoted earlier. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, hallelujah! Listen. Not in the days of William Mary Abraham. In the days of the voice. It is not the man, it is the message. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When he shall begin to sound, because he sounds at the going down of the sun at evening time, he said what? The mystery of God should be finished. Which mystery? He didn't say mysteries of God. He said one mystery. That mystery, Apostle Paul explained in Ephesians chapter 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How the Gentiles came into the commonwealth of Israel and even occupy a higher position. Gentiles that Jesus Christ called dogs. Gentiles that are nothing, nothing, nothing. How now we occupy a position known as the bride of Jesus Christ. Higher than that of the Jews. For he came to his own. His own received him not. But as many, how many of them? How many of them? As many as receive him. As many as receive him. To them gave he power to become the son of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He said it is a mystery. The mystery there. There is a process that he will use. To gather them. And it is a mystery because he refused to reveal it to anybody. He said that mystery will be rounding up in the days of the voice of the seventh angel. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You come into bride assembly. Are you beginning to know who we are now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Eh? Are you beginning to know who we are now? There are... Uh, uh, there, are, there are waiting. There are people almost everywhere whose hearts are all aflame. With a fire that fell on Pentecost, which cleansed and made them clean. It is burning now within my heart. All glory to His name. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. One of them. One of them. Oh, I am one of them. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I can say. Though these people, though these people may not be learned, though these people may not learn it, no post of that living, they have all received their Pentecost. In Jesus' name, and I tell him now, but far away, his power is yet the same. Oh, I'm so glad that I can say, I'm one of them. Hallelujah, I am one of them. Oh, yes, one of them. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I can say, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I am one of them. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. You don't know who we are. This is who we are. We are not another new church springing up. Hallelujah. We had the voice 
of the seventh angel. We heard a cry. We heard a shout. And we responded. Hallelujah. What is the voice? What is the shout? It's going come out. Come out of error. Trim your lambs of revelation. They told you that God, the Godhead is three persons in one God. Trim your lamb of revelation. You will find out that the Jehovah God of the Old Testament is the one that appeared in Jesus Christ of the New Testament. One God that came among us as Emmanuel. And his name is Jesus. You didn't say boldly because you don't know the name. How many of you know the name? His name is Jesus. Jesus is the name of the God of Israel. Hallelujah. The name of